Here on WTF, we've already tackled plant-based burgers, and then we decided to also do something different and tackle plant-based sausages. So we wanted to make something that's going to be accessible to everybody. And today on WTF, we're going to look at a full walkthrough on how to make your own plant-based sausages at home. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. And remember, if you like what you see here today, you've been watching, remember to subscribe. Let me get that word out. Ring the bell so you get notified of our content. It does come out every single Tuesday. And this week, we're going to be talking about a follow-up episode to our recent plant-based meat episode which uh, has people saying, and I'm quoting here, it's better than the Impossible Burger. Your word's not mine, but I do think so. It's, it's a very good plant-based burger. Yeah, so we were like, okay, let's tackle sausage next. And to be honest, you're going to want to stick around this entire episode because uh, when we first started, I think we thought it was going to be kind of easy. We'll just take the meat, we'll put it into a sausage form, boom, done, right? Um, and it ended up not being like that at all. There's a lot of work that went into it. So I'm going to let Scott take it away and explain just how, how exactly you turn a plant-based meat into a plant-based sausage. Yeah, so like you said, I thought it was going to be easy. Right? Mm -hmm. It's just meat. You turn it into sausage. You put it into, uh, I thought the hardest thing would be the skin on the outside, which actually turned out to be one of the easier things to do. But let's kind of get into what the differences are. Is, uh, okay. We do have a new product here. So it's the uh, Better Burger Binder, mm -hmm. or the plant-based burger binder. So what that does is that allows you to get that kind of bouncy texture that you would find with a sausage. Mm -hmm. Now we did try to add it, you know, let's see if we could just make the, the burger itself with that. And uh, we found it was just a bit inconsistent. So we wanted to use it just for the sausage and mm -hmm. we still want to use the methacellulose HV for the burger. Mm -hmm. uh, you could potentially make it with the uh, burger binder but it's just going to be a little bit more crumbly than the original. So it does work, but it's a little bit more crumbly. So let's get into just how we made it. First, I have the uh, plant-based ground beef that we have on our uh, blog, mm -hmm. blog.modernistpantry.com. Links in the description below. Mm -hmm. And I just have my spices. So I'm going to take that meat, just as if you ground your own meat, right, if you were making sausage. Uh, and then I'm going to add my spices in here. This is a spice mixture for a hot Italian sausage. So there's some uh, chili flake, some paprika, salt, black pepper, fennel, all those things that you would find in a sausage. And I'm just gonna mix that up briefly, just enough to incorporate it. Okay. And I think on the blog, we have multiple recipes for different yes. sausages. What are the other types we're offering? So we have all the sausages here. We actually have a breakfast sausage, mm -hmm. so it's slightly sweet, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, sage forward kind of sausage. And then we also have a garlic and broccoli rob Ooh, sausage, which we're gonna be exciting. demoing cooking here today. So awesome. uh, we have those. So I, I just mix in my uh, spices just a little bit. And mm -hmm. then I have this. So this is water and about 3% of the burger binder. Mm -hmm. So I just mix it up in a blender and allow it to get nice and thick like this. It will eventually uh, thicken up over about an hour's time. Yeah. And that's um, incredibly thick. Yes, incredibly yeah. thick. And what this does, this is actually a super gelling agent. So when I add this in and it's heated, it will um, you know, kind of coat that sausage. And as you cook it, it becomes nice and has that nice bounce and spring and it traps in all that fat that's in there. So when you bite into it, the snap comes also from the skin, but like that bounce that you get from a sausage. Yeah. So I'm just gonna add this directly in to my meat mixture here. And I'm just going to mix it until it's combined. So once I see it start to, and this is actually kind of amazing because it looks like when you emulsify a, uh, a meat-based sausage, mm -hmm it will start to get sticky and like stick to the sides. It has a very uh, certain look. And actually when I do this, it looks almost identical. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. So I'm gonna mix this up. It'll start to hydrate a little bit. What that's happening is the burger binder is starting to coat that burger, that plant-based burger. And you get a nice sticky mixture here. And once it comes together, I can just take a little scoop out here. You can see, right? That's Ooh. what it looks like. Yeah. Now from here you can do a number of things. If you don't want to put a skin on it, mm -hmm. you can absolutely take it. Uh, what I did is I put it into a piping bag and I just put it onto parchment paper and mm -hmm. then I covered it. 
and I pressed them and froze them, and you could have sausage patties, which we did here with our breakfast sausage. Cool. So if I just move this out of the way, we can see our breakfast sausage oh, right here. Oh, that looks so nice. So we have also our uh, eggs essential and then our vegan um, cheddar cheese on there as well. So Bacon, egg, and cheese. So bacon, egg, and cheese, completely plant-based, as long as you get a plant-based English muffin. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this right here, what we would do is we would take it. Uh, you can check on our Instagram. We did a full kind of rundown, a, a visual uh, recipe of it, so you can see exactly how you make it, because it takes a little bit of work, you know, piping it, rolling it, tying it, freezing it. But for the benefit of internet television, we actually made one prior. So mm -hmm. right here I have it. This is it. It was wrapped in plastic. So what I'm going to do here... So I'm going to take this and I'm going to dip it into sodium alginate. Mm -hmm. So this is actually a perfected sodium alginate. This is a 2% uh, to the total weight of the liquid. So it's very thick. This is much thicker than what you would use for spherification. And that's traditionally what uh, this is used for. So sodium alginate is used in spherification. And spherification is when you take uh, the sodium alginate and it connects to the calcium and it creates an instant gel. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to do on the outside. And we have many videos and many recipes about spherification. So if you're new to that, check out our other videos. Uh, we'll link some in the description below just so you can get an idea of what's really happening here. Yeah. So what I want to do is I want to dip this into the sodium alginate and it's going to coat the outside. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to put it into this liquid here, which is just water and calcium chloride. And when it goes into that, it's going to create an instant gel on the outside. So it's going to mimic uh, the skin of a sausage, yeah. right? So. And I want to just give a shout out to Sauce Dash, mm -hmm. who's awesome if you follow him or if that's how you found us. Yes, I don't welcome. know, but but um, anyway, he's the, actually that's where we got this idea from. We're like, what a great idea! Well, you kind of took it and tweaked it a little bit. Yeah, and so he, he did mm -hmm. a few things, but I, I've I've done thousands of tests with spherification, so I wanted to kind of try and uh, simplify it a little bit. But yeah, he had a great idea, mm -hmm. and so what I'm going to do is. Just dip it, and you'll see as it comes up, it is nice and thick. Wow. And it's totally fine if you get a little tail end here mm -hmm. because we just snip it off after. And so it, I'm just gonna it dip really it a looks like it's coated. Right? Uh oh, so there it goes. <laughs> so just get it back. Now in it's there. coated three times. Yes. It's okay because once I drip off any of it and it goes into our calcium liquid, mm -hmm. it'll only be that thick. So you can dip it in and out as many times as you want. So it, once it goes in here, it'll be set immediately, it won't drip. Okay. Right. See, see, this is set. So right. Great. And usually for spherification, we'll leave it in for a few minutes. Are we doing that here today? So we're leaving it in a lot longer. Since okay. that is so thick, I want to give the calcium enough time to penetrate all the way through uh, to really set that skin. So I leave this in here for 10 minutes, okay. take it out, rinse it in some fresh water. Mm -hmm. And then the next step is actually to dry it gently. You can put it onto like a nonstick sheet uh, and just leave it in your oven off. So it's just a dry uh, environment will mm -hmm. kind of set the skin on the outside. And what you end up with is uh, what looks like a sausage, right? Ooh. You have a bounce, there's a nice wow. sheen to the outside, and this is actually our garlic and broccoli rob sausage. That looks so good already. Right, so, so let's get into just cooking it. Okay. Right, so I'm just gonna put it into a pan at about medium heat. And one thing that I found is if I took it immediately out of here like this and tried to cook it, mm -hmm. there's a lot of water trapped yeah. within that. So when I put it in, it splattered. Also, the water in there would boil and it would burst the skin off the outside. So I wanted to dry it a little bit okay. before I put it into any hot oil um, for safety and for appearances. Okay. So as I did that, then I found, you know, I could have the skin on the outside that if you fit through it, you get that kind of snap that you would get from a traditional sausage and you're able to slice it beautifully. You can see here, these. this is the exact mm. sausage, same batch as this. I was able to slice it, present it in like a charcuterie garni mm. or, you know, breakfast sausage, things like that. So whatever you want to do with it, you can absolutely do. And actually, this is something good to talk about, uh, showing a comparison to, uh, you know, the leading plant-based sausage uh, that you would find in the grocery store. Okay. Yeah, so uh, you can see they're, they're very similar in size. I try to make them almost identical. Mm -hmm. uh, ours, I like to say, uh, has a little bit more traditional look with the darker kind of yep. uh, rich colors. It does. Uh, they both, if you squeeze them, the fat comes out of them. We'll do mm -hmm. it with this one here. Mm -hmm. We'll break it in half and kind of show that, you know, freshly cooked, the fat is still nice and juicy on the inside. Mm -hmm. But Janie, if you want to try anything, I think... Uh, 
The proof is in the pudding. I so. do. All right. I'm going to try this one since that's the one we're cooking. Right. And I think one of the questions, I have a couple of questions, but one of the ones that we've gotten, you know, people are like, this is great. I want to make it. Can I then freeze out what, you know, like yep. if I make tons of it, yes. can I freeze what I don't use and then keep it? So 100%. So uh, let's just say with these right here, the breakfast cool. sausage and the, uh, the hot Italian sausage, uh, those were frozen. I made them frozen mm -hmm. as a test and I took them right out. Uh, I thought them for a little bit just so the outside could sear up really nicely and it absolutely works. Mm -hmm. um, so I was also able to freeze them like this one was frozen. I like to freeze them just a little bit before I do the dipping because it holds on to that, uh, the skewer or toothpick, whatever you happen to use, right? So after having this in here for a little bit, I'm just gonna show you. If you have any tails like this, it's very simple. You can just pinch it right off. Mm -hmm. And during the drying, that little bit goes away. And sometimes it actually happens right mm -hmm. up here, which is really nice. So when you pull it off, it looks like it was connected to another yeah. link, like a traditional sausage. So that's really awesome, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so this right here, the one that we're cooking up, the one that you just tasted, and you can That's see this really beautiful nice. mm -hmm. golden brown that it, it turns. If you even turn this up just a little bit more, mm -hmm. you know, that broccoli rabe gives a nice little bitterness, the garlic that's mm -hmm. in there, right? A little bit of salt, a little bit of fennel seed, so really nice flavor combinations. It goes great with things like mustard and, um, and sauerkraut and what, whatever you'd find generally yeah. with. Or cheese and egg. So. Yeah, this <laughs> sausage is really, really yummy. Great. I really enjoyed it, and I think you know, when we first started the process and we tried it with just the HV in the sausage, there's such a huge difference between the texture of this sausage yeah. and that one. So yeah, you could just make this recipe with just the HV, but it's not going to come out exactly the same. And that's yeah. kind of some of the feedback that, you know, we've been talking to people and they're like, can I just substitute this for that? Can I just sub in this? I like you could, but you're not going to get exactly what this recipe is going to offer you, which in our opinion is the best sausage and the best burgers, etc. Yeah, so we wanted and initially, like you said at the mm. beginning, it's like, we thought this was going to be easy. This was not easy. We thought that this was just going to be, okay, we could have this done in a week. Mm -hmm. It was not done in a week. This mm -hmm. took a lot of testing to really want to nail down and be comparable, if not better, to, than what you would get in the store and at a much cheaper price point. So you're able to make it at home for a third of the cost of what you would pay in the store, mm -hmm. uh, which is better for everyone who wants to eat plant-based because, or yeah. even, you know, just try it out because it's just so much uh, more cost effective. Yeah. And one of the other things that I think we just want to address that's come up a lot in our, in our conversations with customers is um, when you're making the plant-based meat, and if you, ha if you don't know what we're talking about, just go to the links in the description below, you can get the full recipe there, but it's basically you know, how Scott made this meat here. Yes. Um, one of the feedback that we're getting is that the marbling fat that they're trying to make, you know, they're not using like Arch Roots Grove, like coconut oil, they're like, I already got coconut oil at home, why do I need another bottle? They just go with theirs. And what they're finding is that their marbling fat is not coming out the same. They yes. have a hard time breaking it apart and it's just not emulsifying as well. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about why that is? Sure, so this melts at a very specific temperature and mm -hmm. when you melt this down and you want to uh, make the emulsion out of it, sometimes you know, store-bought are less refined and uh, this is a very refined uh, coconut oil. So mm -hmm. when you're trying to make that emulsion, it's going to thicken up a bit too quick. Uh, also, a lot of the store-bought ones are going to taste of coconut. Mm -hmm. Ours does not. Uh, there's no aroma to it at all. Mm -hmm. So you're going to want to use this one because with our recipe that we formulated, mm -hmm. this is what specifically works with it. I did try with another one. It does not work the same way. It thickens up too quick and the emulsion breaks, which I know that people have uh, an issue with. Mm -hmm. So also one thing you want to do is make sure everything's about the same temperature. If not, this can be a little bit warmer, which is totally fine because if this gets too cold, yeah. it's going to solidify. Mm -hmm. And if it solidifies, that emulsion is broken. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure things are all the correct temperature. And these are just little troubleshooting things. It's totally fine. If people have an issue with it, you can absolutely come to us. Yep. We will help you out. Try and make this the best experience for you. So. Uh, that's just one thing we wanted to touch on because I think that's a really important point mm -hmm. uh, because there are a lot of people who already have coconut oil at yep. home, mm -hmm. but this is a specifically, um, you know, tested one for this recipe. So, yeah. And so it works great in other recipes. If you just do decide to switch over, you can still make all, all the rest of your favorite things. Make all of our great plant-based <laughs> cheeses with it, right? Exactly. So we have you this can make right this, here. Which I love. I love that it looks just like, like what you get from McDonald's, but like way better. <laughs> <laughs> and plant-based. Yes. So I'm going to just slice this in half. And as and you can see, if I prop this up, we can get 
the nice beautiful Ooh. juices that come out of it right and that's the fat and the juice from the the recipe itself yeah. and we were not getting that if we didn't use the uh, burger binder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we were not getting that. It was drying out way too much. It was almost grainy, mm -hmm. which is uh, some of the recipes that I tried, you know, just testing from the internet. That's what was happening. It was very grainy mm -hmm. um, and not bouncy and not juicy like this. So mm -hmm. I'm very happy with this recipe. And I think everyone should try it. Yeah, so definitely try it. Um, go on Instagram at Modernist Pantry. You can basically see the whole beginning to the end of the sausage making process and the recipes on the blog. You can get everything here from our store. So we, we're, we're here for you. And if you do run to anything, email in, leave your comments, questions below. Uh, we love to hear from you. So from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Garrett. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. And hit that bell so you get notified when we drop a new video. To get today's recipes and all of our recipes, remember to go to blog.modernistpantry.com where you get recipes, ask a chef's tips and tricks, and more. And if you haven't already, tell a friend so they know what's going on here at WTF. And as always, to get any of the ingredients you saw today, you can go to modernistpantry.com to shop. And until next time, we'll be here in the test kitchen helping you create memorable and magical experiences.